is it the biggest gym you've been to as well? I think it's the biggest gym I've been to, yeah, definitely. They're like a similar height to what I've been, but it's just like the sheer space. And I really wish that this was here uh, when I was young. This is like so much better than the place that I grew up in. And they've set a crack uh, bowler for us. Uh, I think it looks really hard. Uh, Pete think it looks really easy. <laughs> He actually didn't say that, but I could tell by the way you looked at it. Uh, and th these are your new crack gloves, right? Yes, yeah. So, th so that would be the tester, because if you, if if, you manage the boulder in yeah. the crack gloves... Honestly, I don't think any crack yeah. gloves would <laughs> get me up that boulder, but you never know. I think we should do like a quick uh, gym tour though, because this gym is probably... It might be the best gym I've seen, like ever. Uh, it's a very big building, so there's a lot of other stuff going on in the building. There's like a weight room, there's conference rooms, there's uh, a lot of different sports in the same building. Everything was uh, founded by a guy called Ton Moon. He's, uh, he's like a local hero who's donated a lot of money to sports in Bergen. So this is all the, like, the, the commercial bouldering. The volumes on the wall, they are on for everything unlike the gym in Oslo, where you can only use the volumes that are in the same color as the prom you're trying. And they use a tape system here, so the, the bowlers are not graded, so you have to look at the color of the tape. Every section is named after a local bouldering spot. Motle is a really famous place. We're, we might go to Motle and make a video. We might do. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and they have a lot of uh, the wide boys volumes as well. Yeah, they have a few of those. Yeah, a few we're gonna try that bowler later. Yeah, <laughs> and Pete looked at it and then uh, he immediately no, knew what to do. I'm I was like so confused. I'm for that one. And then this like massive uh, lead wall and double speed wall. I mean, just what, look at this place. What's quite nice about the uh, the speed climbing as well is they actually have proper timers. Yeah, which is quite good. Uh, so this is uh, they call this the competition wall. There are not many routes on it, and they're gonna probably keep it this way. They want to keep it clean uh, and set like comp style routes. We might do a uh, lead climbing video as well. For us it feels a little bit boring to watch because it takes so long to climb a route. Do you think we should do a... Well I think the nice thing about these routes is they look quite interesting. That's true. So hopefully there'll be some interesting moves on. So we should make like, a lead video then. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think so. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a uh, lead wall behind me. Uh, so you choose the route and it lights up. There are about like 30 different routes here from 5A to 8B plus. Behind here there's a, uh, this is like where they do climbing courses and stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm not part owner or anything of this climbing gym. So that's not why I'm advertising for this. It's, <laughs> I just, I'm just fascinated when I see like a cool climbing gym like this. This was built by Friction Walls. They're the same company that built the walls in, uh, in Oslo and in Kristiansand. They're basically building all the cl climbing gyms that are put up in Norway nowadays. There's also a big lead wall up there, but it looks tiny compared to these big lead walls. So I think in Europe, there's only two gyms that are bigger than this, as far as I know. There's the one in Edinburgh, and there's the one in Innsbruck. That's in uh, terms of climbing surface area. Surface area, yeah. yeah. And uh, the one in Innsbruck has, a lot of that climbing is outdoors. So I guess you can't use that during the winter because it's too cold. A little bit shorter uh, lead uh, walls. I, I think it's good because I know that a lot of people get a little bit intimidated by the really big walls. Do you think you could make this into a crack climb, uh, Pete? You can make everything into a crack climb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can get a little cheeky jam in there. <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe your fat fingers yeah, could. Maybe my fat fingers could fit in there, yeah. yeah. It does look pretty impressive from here, actually. Yeah. So up there is the training room. So what's like, what do you like from a training room? What, what do you like to see? What do you like to see? Well, the there are certain room? things. I mean, you can tell me if, if there's something missing. But I would say that, like, you need a campus board. Kilter board, moon board, maybe even a tension board. They don't have a tension board here. The cool thing about this kilter board, though, is that you can adjust it, so you can adjust the angle. So if you like, if you project something and you send the project, you can make it slightly harder just by changing the angle five degrees. Like we felt this wall uh, earlier and it's really stable too. Sometimes when you have the adjustable walls, they will be kind of wobbly, but this one is dead still. What do you prefer, the kilter board, the moon board or the tension board? 
I've never climbed on a tension board, mm. uh, but I would pick the kilt board over the moon board. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just the holds are much nicer. Yeah. Um, and the lighting system, like that's the, the kind of way climbing is going and training is going yeah. with these like adjustable walls. Yeah. Uh, lighting systems. Yeah. The campus board could have been a little bit bigger, I think, uh, but it's okay. Does it go up to nine? Yeah, nine. So, yeah, so you can you can do one five nine. How's the benchmark strength there? Have you ever not, done one never, five nine? I've never done one five no. nine. I've not even been close to one five nine. No. Have you? Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You do like do some freakish stuff. Beastmaker, that's also that should be standard, I think. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely agree because it has like. It's such a standard fingerboard, it has the it has benchmarks on, doesn't yeah. it? This one is kind of cool. I hadn't seen this before. So you can adjust the angle just by pulling this up. So it's kind of like the kilter board where you can kind of like just make it slightly harder by changing the angle. Do you think in the future cool. they'll have uh, lighted system, like like lighted fingerboards? LED yeah. fingerboards? Yeah. Maybe. Like you doing... know when you just do canvassing on the fingerboard? Yeah. If they had like slightly better edges and then the next hole would just light up and you do like 100 move canvas. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a chaos wall uh, behind here. It's uh, 12 meters long. Uh, so a chaos wall is just filled with different holes and you make problems uh, yourself or with friends. Uh, so there should be just as many holds as possible. I don't know you've seen those photos of like Japanese walls, where there's not like a, even like a square centimeter without any holds. It's so packed, and so just like the more holds, the easier it is to make good problems. So I think that was the gym. There's a little wall up there. Uh, there's a kids' room downstairs. I mean, it's good to have okay kids' rooms because that's gonna recruit more young climbers. The next Adam Andra. You're just gonna jump on this? Yeah, I'm, yeah, should we just give it a go? Yeah, because you pretty much know the beta just from looking at it, right? Because you set yeah. so many bowlers with these types of holds. I mean, they're your holds. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, it starts with uh, perfect hands up to three volumes, and then there's a transition into thin hands. And that thin hands in a roof, that is always tricky. Mm. And then you have to make the move going around the little lip. I'm not sure, may maybe you might be able to do it hands first, or maybe it would be something similar to, remember that move that we set in also? Yeah. Uh, that was actually off a, that was actually off a hand jam, and then oh. remember going into the yeah, yeah, yeah. the feet first into the uh, fist jam. Uh, it doesn't look as big as that though. Can you give a uh, great estimation before starting? On this one? Yeah. Uh, I'll go for um, 7B. Okay, and then you 7B add. plus and then you add about five grades and then you have the <laughs> correct grade. <laughs> well, I could be totally wrong with that. Yeah. Do you feel any uh, nerves before the flash attempt? Do you feel like you should flash this? I feel like I should flash my own volumes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no matter how they're set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the key for any crack climbing. It's not chalking the fingers, it's chalking the palms. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> there we go. It is, a, it is a little bit tricky getting, establishing yourself on the, the thin one in the middle. Yeah. I think it probably is about right, like 7B seven, seven seven plus. plus, yeah, 7B, seven 7B seven plus. Yeah, maybe, yeah, you know how to crack climb, yeah, yeah. Do you own a pair of crack gloves? Marcus? I don't. Oh, you don't? No. Oh. But I might buy a pair of these. Taping is too much work for me. I don't, Yeah. it's, uh, Especially like if you do a full crack session, which I've never done. <laughs> I was just about to then, say, so then, yeah. <laughs> then, is this it? Have we, have we changed you? <laughs> yeah. Then I, it might be worth the investment, but yeah. I this mean, is, if you just try one problem. This it's... is Magnus talking about crack <laughs> sessions. Yeah. I was like, where's that coming changing. from? <laughs> Feet all the way to the end, and then flip back around. Yeah. Good. Left hand at the top of the volume. Come on.
Come on. Keep working the feet. Yes, that's it, that's it. Now reach across. Oh. That was it. Oh, you spend so much more time climbing a crack bowler than a normal bowler. I get out of breath when you just climb cracks. <laughs> so I, I don't think you guys want to see me fail again and again. So I'm just going to try the different parts. And then we're going to move on to try different bowlers. Like, there are a lot of different hard bowlers in this gym. But before we do that, we're going to take a little commercial break. So today's video is brought to you by Raycon. These are the Everyday E25 earbuds. They come in a lot of different cool colors. They're perfect if you want to take some time off the screen, but you don't want to completely disconnect. I use these to not only listen to music, but also listen to my favorite podcast. I uh, go running with them, climb with them, and uh, no matter how hard I shake it, they're not gonna come out. They have up to six hours of play time and you can charge them four times in this compact carrying case. They have more bass, amazing sound, and they come at about half the price of any other premium brands that you guys know. They have a 45 day free return policy. They're also chalk resistant, or as far as I know, I mean, I've chalked them up pretty hard. So all you have to do is go to the link in the description or you go to buyraycon.com forward slash magnet and you will get 15% off. Thank you Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the climbing. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> you have fatter fingers than me and you can get your fingers in that. <laughs> this is medium, this is small, this is large. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for me, the medium one is, or for everyone, the medium one is uh, the easiest one. I don't know if you see the difference, but this one you can't really get your fingers in at all. And the upper one is like a little bit too wide. So it feels really loose. There's like too much space in there. Good, good. Yeah, really good. That was good. I can't quite remember the, the configuration I used with my hands, but it's probably quite important that you go the correct way around so you do the minimum amount of moves. Bring your feet out and flip the top hand. Yes, like that. Maybe I'll try this again. But now I kind of just want to try some of the normal bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have to say, I think you've got smoother on the hands though. Like each time we we make you crack climb again. Yeah. I feel like you... <laughs> yeah, like, pro it's probably like the muscle memory yeah. and like the moves are working in the back of my head even mm -hmm. though I'm not like training it. Yeah. But that's also how I feel bouldering sometimes, you know, if you try a boulder outside uh, for one session and then you don't try for a year and you come back, you still feel a bit better usually, mm. just mm. because you sort of remember it. So how do you feel about the World Cups now having cracks? The World Cups having cracks? Yeah. I, think, I think it's really good. Alexi Rivstoff jamming, that's what we call, that's what we mean by when we say a jam is left hand, just pressing out with the knuckles. It's like a new style, it mm. brings something else in and it's something else for like the competitors to like work on and try. And I think, I mean, these are like the best athletes in the world, aren't they, competing? Yeah. I feel like they should be like well-rounded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the Olympics, they're getting them to do speed climbing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, th throw it all in there. I mean, they yeah. have parkour, they have the crimps, slopers, like compressions, like yeah. get the cracks in there. Yeah, I hear a lot of people <laughs> hating on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think most climbers don't like to see cracks too much i mean it's not something as natural in the gym especially like you don't really train cracks in the gym too much it's really difficult to set but you've not gotten a call from any uh, world cup teams yet no but we keep contacting people <laughs> we literally like you contact people yeah 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 we've been contacting people yeah yeah because you want to help them with yeah crack yeah yeah them. like i do like i do want to help them yeah yeah definitely <laughs> do like uh, like yeah, it'd be great to bring you know, yeah. bring the crack climbing to people. Yeah, that was one of those to teach people. Now we've gone from my style yeah. to my complete anti style. <laughs> so this is like classic comp style, yeah. dino jump. Probably from looking at it into some toe hook maybe. Yeah, you uh, probably have to catch the toe hook first swing. That's my guess. Yeah, from a swing, yeah. Yeah, yeah first swing as well, because that's, yeah. that's sloping to the left. Yeah, so you'll see that this totally isn't my bag. 
<laughs> you want me to try it first though? I usually, yeah. I take a few tries to learn the moves on yeah. these types yeah. of bowlers. When you were competing, did they have these, had these style of problems come into your... Yeah, a little bit, but I didn't compete much in bouldering. Ah, okay. It was mainly lead. Yeah. What's the tactic? Brushing really well. <laughs> Now, so the tactic is just to be confident on the first try. Overshoot it a little bit so that you land it with a little bit bent arms and then just aim for the toe hook right away. Because if you don't catch the toe hook right away, you're just gonna swing back off the hold. Is that the technique, overshoot it a little bit? Is yeah, usually on, on dynos, especially if I want to flash a dyno, I, uh, I, I try to overshoot a little bit. Because hmm. just to be able to control it a little bit, you know? I think it's good practice just to commit and try to flash everything you get on, okay. basically. Even if it's like really, really hard and you know you're not gonna flash it. <laughs> yeah. And another thing that's also very typical on a boy like this is that you get so caught up in that one move, you know, the jump move, that you forget to look at the rest. <laughs> I've done that mistake so many times. I stick that first move and it's not as hard as you think, and then you've not looked at the top at all. I think the top looks okay though, but you never know. There's no chalk up there. That's true. <laughs> That's a good observation. Ooh, I could almost stick it with that uh, toe hook. Ooh, come on. Come on. Yes. Easy. I wish it was a little bit smoother. You know, I couldn't catch it on the first, but I, cut, I sort of catch it on the first, so I could break the swing a little bit. Yeah. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's gonna be really tricky. Yeah, okay. closer. It just takes a while to learn the move, you know? Because this is just technique, it's nothing else. Yeah, and spring in the legs. I think your legs are stronger than me. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried sitting in 90 degrees? No. Because no, I know no. that you hung on a bar for 20 minutes. Yeah. I think your pain tolerance is crazy good. You should try uh, 90 degree. Yeah, uh, the 90 degree. Yeah, L sitting L in 90 degrees. Well, I wonder what the world record is for that. Oh, I think it's, uh, I've time. seen it somewhere. I think it's 12 hours or something. <laughs> 12 hours? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's perfect. Toe hook is massive, isn't it? Yeah, like, it's really good. Yeah. As long as you don't hit the dual texture part. Yeah. No, I can just give me a few more goes. Yeah. That was close. <laughs> it's close. That was close. Yeah. What's the top like? I get there. Top is easy. The top's alright. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, easy. Nice. Now you have to jump. It's a, jump. it's a little bit hard, but it's a good hold you're going for. <laughs> it's a good hold you're going for. Come on. It's a jug. Yeah. Nice. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made the dino look so easy though. Oh, I, yeah, I got the dino then. That was I, good. And I think if you've done the dino once, it's going to be easy next time. Yeah. That's usually how it is with dinos. That was funny before because you, you said, no, I asked you, I was like, what's the top like? And you're like, oh, no, no, no it's easy. Yeah, I forgot and about then, that one yeah, move. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got up there and I was like, how do, how do you do that move? And you're like, oh yeah, that's a little bit hard. You just jump. <laughs> It's strange because the feet are so bad. So how hard uh, do you think this bowler is? Because it could be anything from 7B to 7C plus according to the tape thing. I was just about to say maybe 7B plus. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, easy. 
Oh, that's like me. <laughs> Good. Come on. Come on, Pete. Yeah. Good. Oh, there we go. You really it's kill that bowler. <laughs> it is just like a learning thing, that jump, isn't it? Yeah, you really learned the move. I felt yeah. like I was kind of just like lucky. How's, <laughs> how's your knee, by the way? Oh, the knee. Yeah, it's, um, it's probably about 95%. I wouldn't feel confident in doing that same style of move, you know, yeah. on the side of the heel and really pulling on it. Okay, this one doesn't look so bad, actually. Come on, come on, come on, easy. Come on. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna try like a sneaky match. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to peel off like that. Actually. No, not me neither. <laughs> yeah, it's not that good. You might have to do it like that. How you were doing toe hooking and reach yeah, over. Yeah, and reach over and just like try to sneak in a second hand. Without a heel hook? Oh, did you, did you put heel on? Yeah, Okay. right heel hook. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Into that. Yep. Come on. Woo Yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should just try the upper part first. Oh, I think it'd be good to know to what, know to, what do. to do. What? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's really hard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right? Yeah. The only other way is like coming out and matching on that. Yeah. That volume. This looks so easy from the ground too. Yeah. I think I'm gonna try it without a toe hook. Try to come in and match. Maybe do like a quick step with the feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. As soon as you let go of that toe hook. So much of a swing. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's like I was really trying to squeeze then. <laughs> yeah. It's almost that whole feels like the harder you squeeze, the worse it gets. Yeah. Should we give up on that one? Move on to the next one? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Is this your style, would you say? No. <laughs> no. I guess so the thing with these things are when there's sometimes volumes is you there is sometimes some like sneaky beta. Yeah. But you do have to have some beef as well. Beef helps. <laughs> <laughs> Still looks like that. But that and move. Then that move. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Pete. Nice. Yeah.
Come on. Come on, Pete. Yeah, easy. <laughs> I think you'll that was right. good. Yeah, Very it was good. not Flash too bad for a first game, yeah. So I guess this is the sort of bowler you can't have many tries on. Yeah, totally. It's very powerful and draining. Because mm. like, it looked like you were like compressing really hard the whole way. Yeah. Supposed to go all out, dino into double clutch. Double clutch. <laughs> I've been practicing my double clutches. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to go triple. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to try it like that. No. No. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to try it like that either. Heel hook didn't really work. Because mm. that way you're going to grab the undercling like this. You need to be able to grab it like here. Yeah, nice. That's it. No, you can't. Was that? You just, no, you just. No? You feel completely stuck. <laughs> oh, I like the look of it though. Yeah, yeah, that was a cool move. Yeah. But... Come on. The heel just makes you feel kind of stuck. Yeah, like you're too far back that yeah. way. Toe hook, maybe, and then come into that. Yeah, come on. Yes. There you go. Ooh. Oh, yeah, toe hook. Grab it one hand, and then I think you have to jump out of that position. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Try to put my left foot here instead of there. That doesn't work. I don't know, I, th I think that is the solution for me. You wanna try that one time? Uh, I'll give it a go with the toe yeah, yeah. and see what happens. Come on. Yeah, easy, come on man. <laughs> I was so crap at toe hooking, like I couldn't get that to work. I feel like I, I did best on my flash go. You try a little bit harder sometimes on your flash go. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna try it from the beginning. Sometimes I feel like when I come from the ground, I'm a little bit more psyched. And I try a little bit harder. But I don't know on a problem like this though, I'm probably just gonna feel more tired, so. Time. We should uh, let it rest maybe. Yeah. So I think we're just gonna end the video there. Also this video was shot with uh, 50 frames per second. Usually I, I shoot in 25 frames so let me know what you prefer. Uh, maybe you don't see the difference. Uh, make sure you also check out the Wide Boys on YouTube and on Instagram and uh, we'll see you next time.